Ubuntu 24.4 is dropping today, or maybe it has been out for four months by the time you're watching this video. But this time it's an LTS, that's because it's been two years since the last one and that's how things work. This means that Ubuntu will not only be supported for 5 or 10 or 12 years depending on how much money you're willing to give Canonical, but also that it's going to be the base for a lot of other distributions like Linux Mint, Elementor OS, Zorin OS and a lot more. But of course you can also just use it as your desktop, so let's take a look at everything that changed in 24.04 and it all of its main official variants. And also what changed in this segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace and you probably have heard about them by now, but if you haven't, just know that they're your all-in-one solution to build your own website, however complex or simple you want it to be. You can completely customize the website to look and feel and have the features that you want. You have a big selection of templates and then you can rearrange them by just dragging and dropping blocks into place. You can change the general colors, you can add new pages and you have a big library of modules like a complete online shop with online payment or a members only area, a video gallery. You can even pick your own domain name and book it from Squarespace and they even have a module to design your own logo. So if you need a website but you don't really know how to get started or you don't have the time or the technical skills, just head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment or click the link in the description below and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So let's start by touching briefly on the Ubuntu installer. This thing got some love and some redesigned screens. Most pages now feature the same kind of layout with a big icon on the left and the elements you need to pick on the right. This makes the whole thing feel a bit more cohesive, which is always a reassuring factor for newcomers. You can also elect to run an automated install. This will be more useful for organizations and companies that want to deploy the exact same configuration on multiple devices. You just create a YAML file that has all the configs you want, you feed that to the installer when you pick the automated install option, and it will run the same install on any computer you want. You can also still use the experimental TPM backed full disk encryption, but it is still not fully stable, so do not use that on a production system. Now you also get to pick the default install, which is basically the minimal install option of old with just a web browser and a few desktop utilities, or the extended install that comes with more applications. It's the normal install that was offered previously, except now the games are not part of this install anymore. You can still install them manually, but they won't come by default. Additionally, Cheese has been replaced by GNOME Snapshot to handle your webcam, and Thunderbird is now shipped as a snap package instead of a dev, although that snap is officially maintained by the Thunderbird developers. I think it's good to have the minimal install as the default, so you only get what you really need and then you can add exactly what you want on top of that, but I would prefer a sort of list of applications that you could check or uncheck to have a more customized experience and save you a few steps. I'm sure people using the automated configuration with the YAML file would also love being able to specify which applications they want to install. As per Thunderbird moving to snap packages, you have to get used to that on Ubuntu, that's not stopping, and it's probably paving the way for the Ubuntu Core Desktop distro, which will be an immutable variant of Ubuntu built exclusively with snaps. They need to migrate all the apps to snaps for that to even be remotely usable. Now, of course, the main event in Ubuntu 24.04 is GNOME 46, the latest version of that desktop with all the usual added Ubuntu bells and whistles, like their own theme, their dock, their tiling assistant. None of these changed in 24.04. So GNOME 46 gives you a first glimpse at improved notifications. For now they can just be expanded or collapsed and they'll now show a little symbolic icon next to their title to let you know which app spawned them. More interesting, you get experimental support for variable refresh rate, a feature that will let you sync your monitor's refresh rate to the content currently playing on your screen, whether it's a movie or a video game or even a web page, meaning you can not only save battery life, but also reduce latency as well. It is not enabled by default, you will need to use dconf to turn it on. Fractional scaling also got better with fonts now looking less blurry 
and properly aligned when using fractional scaling. And you can now log into a GNOME user through RDP instead of having to remote into a session where someone was already logged in. Now Nautilus, the file manager, finally lets you edit the file path by clicking on the path bar instead of having to press Ctrl plus L to do so. Yes, this is a real feature. It is. Nautilus will also search faster and through the entire file system by default now. If you want to search in a specific folder, there is a dedicated icon for that. File transfers are moved to the sidebar instead of the toolbar. It's a side grade that doesn't change much. And you can also change a folders icon from the properties panel of that folder. Finally, you also get a new option to change how dates are displayed and you can search through Nautilus's settings. Which is entirely useless as a feature because there's like 12 things you can tweak inside of the Nautilus settings. But if at some point they decided to actually have options, you will be able to search through them and not be too confused. Now the main system settings changed a bit as well with a new system page that groups the region and language, the date and time, the users, the remote desktop, the secure shell and the about pages. And it also includes a link to software updates. Default application settings have been merged into the main apps settings page as a subcategory, which also includes the default actions you can configure when you insert removable media. The mouse and touchpad settings now let you configure how you want to trigger the right click on your touchpad and there's a new mouse test page to make sure those settings work for you. You can also turn off the touchpad when typing or disable that setting if you like pain. The GNOME Online accounts also received some love, notably for the backend. It now uses the default browser for authentication into your online accounts, instead of a basic web view. Meaning that first, you can now see the full URL that you're connecting to, which is safer and more reassuring. Second, you can use your saved passwords from your password manager in your browser. And third, you can use USB authentication methods as well. You can also add a web dev account to get access to contacts, calendars and files in all the GNOME apps that integrate with online accounts. And you can add a Microsoft personal account as well, which will give you access to your OneDrive storage straight from Nautilus. So GNOME 46 is mostly just small touches here and there and small improvements. It will not change how you use your desktop or how you use Ubuntu. Now, as per applications, GNOME Calendar gained performance improvements. The Image Viewer Loop now has a keyboard shortcut to permanently delete an image. It's Shift plus Delete. And the GNOME System Monitor was entirely ported to GTK4. Now, you can expect much bigger changes in GNOME 47 and GNOME 48. So, respectively, in Ubuntu 24.10 and 25.04. Because these will bring global keyboard shortcut support for Wayland. They will bring an improved file picker based on Nautilus. They will bring a lot of Wayland improvements as well. Plus, a new accessibility framework, more work on notifications, and encryption of your home directory along a lot of other things. But for now, GNOME 46 in Ubuntu 24.04 doesn't really change much in how you will use your system. Now let's look at what's under the hood in 24.04. And first is the App Center. It was introduced in the previous version in 23.10 and it didn't really change in here. It's still snap first and you can still search for dev packages and install these if you prefer, but it doesn't let you install dev packages that are not from the repos. Ubuntu 24.04 comes with the kernel 6.8, the latest available right now. The main thing in here is the new P-State drivers, meaning your Intel CPUs will be able to hit their advertised boost speeds, but also that using that kernel on laptops should yield better battery life, whether you have an AMD or Intel CPU, especially since Ubuntu 24.04 now uses better power profiles based on these new P-State drivers. All packages in the repos that could get an update also received one, meaning you'll get more recent versions of libraries, applications, and also of the Mesa and Nvidia drivers. If you're coming from Ubuntu 22.04 to 24.04, this will matter immensely because you're getting way higher version numbers for about everything. But if you're coming from 23.10, you're probably not going to notice much of a difference. 
Ubuntu also moves to NetPlan, a network management tool that should not change anything for regular users that just connect to basic Wi-Fi, but it will definitely improve the life of people who have to create complex network configurations. And for gamers, you're also getting a better experience here. The virtual memory mapping limit was increased by a factor of 16 in 24.04, meaning that games that could crash at launch or after an hour of playtime will no longer do so, at least if the crash was related to them trying to grab a lot of memory. It's a change that Arch also recently made. Another interesting change is that all services that are affected by a library update will automatically be restarted to ensure that these services will be running with the latest security fixes applied. It's more important for servers than for desktops because you regularly reboot desktops generally, but yeah, it's a good change and if you really don't like it, you can disable it. So if you're already an Ubuntu user, there are basically no reasons not to proceed to the update, but there's also no real reason to jump on that update as soon as it's available. You're getting better hardware support and potentially better battery life, but that's about it. The features in GNOME 46 are not must-haves here if you were already using GNOME 45, although if you're coming from an older Ubuntu LTS, then yes, there's a lot of stuff that you're gonna want to use here. Now, as per the official Ubuntu flavors, this time around, it is slim pickings. Kubuntu, apart from the changes to the underlying systems and libraries, offers the exact same experience as 23.10. Due to time constraints, they are not moving to Plasma 6, so you are still getting 5.27, meaning that there is nothing new for you, at least in terms of desktop experience. Same goes for Ubuntu Studio, it will stick to 5.27. Xubuntu is still on XFC 4.18, although a lot of the default apps received updates since the previous release, the most notable ones being the ability to print from the image viewer, the application finder now correctly launching games and GPU demanding apps using the dedicated GPU on hybrid graphics system, there's better support for dark themes in the settings, and the file manager now has built-in recursive file search. Ubuntu Cinnamon moves to Cinnamon 6 with better looking settings, the initial bricks of Wayland support, the ability to add context menu entries to the file manager from a new actions and spices store, and there are some more customizable gestures as well. Lubuntu 24.04 sticks with Calamares instead of moving to the new Ubuntu installer, as they found it installs faster and it performs better. The Lubuntu 24.04 minimal install also gets rid of SnapD entirely, interestingly, and they added a GUI for Bluetooth device handling, plus a config editor for the login screen, SDDM. It also gets an optional Wayland session. Ubuntu Budgie got a better weather applet, plus support for all screen edges and all screen corners in the hard corner settings. Applets can now also be globally spaced instead of having to place individual spacers between every single applet in a panel, which will be much easier. The built-in budgie theme was revamped and the Raven panel now has an API that lets developers create new widgets for it. One of these new widgets is a system monitor, for example. They've also switched to status notifier for handling the system tray, so icons here should scale correctly and should better support high DPI, and there are a lot of other smaller changes all across the desktop. And as always, Budgie and also Ubuntu Budgie have the most detailed release notes with every single small change being listed. Kudos to them. I only wish Gnome and KDE did that for their major or minor releases as well. It would make my job a lot easier. Now, in the end, I cannot say Ubuntu 24.04 is a very exciting release. If you're an Ubuntu user, there's no reason not to upgrade, it improves a few things here and there, but GNOME 46 was a pretty small release in terms of visible day-to-day -day experience improvements. And Ubuntu could have continued the previous trend of starting to add more extensions and more things on top of GNOME to really build the desktop they want to ship, but this is an LTS and they're not going to take any risk by shipping something half-broken or unstable in an LTS release. Now the end result here is a new version of Ubuntu that leaves very little to be hyped about, but it's still super competent, it works well if you enjoy Ubuntu, you will enjoy this one, it's stable, it's smooth, it works, if you don't hate snaps, it's perfectly fine.
Now the bigger changes will probably come with 24.10 and 25.04 with GNOME 47 and GNOME 48, which will have definitely a lot more new features and a lot more changes to the actual day-to-day -day experience of using that desktop. And speaking of desktops, but also laptops, how about I tell you about our sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. They make computers that ship with Linux out of the box. You can pick from a selection of popular distros or you can just install your own and get it running because they submit patches upstream when they test this hardware. And if those patches haven't been accepted yet, they also have repos that you can add to implement those fixes early. They have a big range of computers that will fit every price point and every need, whether you need a small form factor laptop for office work, all the way up to a giant workstation or gaming tower or gaming laptop and everything in between. All the devices have tons of configuration options, especially the laptops. You can open those laptops, repair them, upgrade them. And Tuxedo Computers is all I use these days. The channel is run on one of their laptops with an NVIDIA GPU, and all my gaming is done on one of their Tuxedo Cubes, which is a small form factor PC. So if you need a new computer, you want to support Linux's development, and you want to use Linux on something that was made for it, click the link in the description below and get yourself a computer from them. They're really, really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications. And if you want to support the channel, there are plenty of links in the description to do just that with plenty of perks for Patreon members and YouTube members as well. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.